This is a quick tutorial on groups and components in SketchUp. I've got a collection of parts here. I can select the individual bits and pieces. And if I copy this over here and say copy it again, put them together like that, and then I go to move this one, the parts are stuck together. So that, that doesn't do me a lot of good unless I'm trying to create some strange looking part like that. So I'll un undo that. Um, if, let me get rid of this one too. If I triple click on this to select the whole thing, or, or I could draw a box around it, and I right click on it and make it a group, now it is its own uh, group of parts, right? As hence the name. Um, notice when I try and click on the individual bits and pieces, I can't can't select them. So now if I do the same thing, I copy it over here, and then I take another copy. Notice I don't have to click on it once to copy it. I don't have to triple click. Um, and I move it to there. I can now move it, and there, the parts aren't stuck together anymore. So that's really helpful to have these different items as groups. Uh, now, what if I want to edit one of these groups? I, I can't, notice I can't select on stuff. I've got to push pull, it won't let me. So what I have to do is uh, a couple different things. Either right click and edit group. Notice I've got this bit of uh, dash box around. That means now I can select the bits and pieces inside. Uh, and the quicker way I find is just to double click on it. And now I can edit the various parts, do whatever I want to it. Um, if I say I want to cre create a tenon on here, I can, oops, there we go. I can create a tenon there easily. Undo. Okay, that works great. But the problem with groups is a group doesn't really have any association with anything else. This group is different than this group, and if I just created a, a project with a bunch of different groups in it, th there's no relation to the various parts. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this one, and this is a group. I'm going to right-click on it and explode, which means it's not a group anymore. Now just know I notice uh, I can select the individual parts now. This time, I'm going to right click on it and make it a component. Uh, I'm just going to leave the name there. I'll click create. I'm making sure that box is select. And notice in the component window, there is my component I just created. And if I highlight it here, it has the name up here. I can rename it. I'm going to call it apron. Notice it changes it there. I can bring another one in from there. I can get rid of it. Okay, so now I'm going to copy this over here. And if I edit this, double click on it, and we'll do another offset here. And notice when I'm editing this, it edits both of them. So this part, this apron, is associated with another part, another apron, or another instance of that part. So these are two instances of this part. And if I was to open up the Entity Info box over here and highlight one of these, it will tell me that it's a component. There's two in the model. It tells me the name. I can also change the name over here. Now, let's say I've got long aprons and short aprons in my model. I can uh, select one of these. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to make it unique. It is now different. It's still a component, but it's different than this component. Notice it says apron number one. I can click it over here. I'll just say apron long and escape out of there. So I open this up. I can 
make this one longer than the other one. And now I have two different components. They're both uh, in independent parts. If I create more of this one or more of this one, those will be different instances of the same component. Very handy, very useful. Uh, I tend not to use groups much just for temporary use. In general, components are the way to go if I'm making a, uh, a project with lots of parts.